Hey friends, so a interesting thing that I came across this week was a report from Asana in joint collaboration with Anthropic, who are the creators of the Claude AI conversational tool. This report is very far reaching. I've got a huge breakdown of it in the premium version of the Steel Dee Sports newsletter. So you can check that out there if you want to get the full thing. One of the things I do want to talk about and one of the most interesting insights to me is how a lot of people are using generative AI to do very boring and basic tasks. And that actually doesn't surprise me because I've always believed on a global consumer level, 90% of the world will use these tools for boring and basic stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. Boring and basic tasks are often the things that are most time consuming. So when you think about emails, meetings, summarizing long articles or those people out there who send huge emails, I know who you are, please stop. Despite all the fancy things that we see on social media with using AI to build this or automate this company, it seems like the everyday human just wants to get better at writing emails. And that's cool, right? Because there's so much snake oil of AI at the moment is that we're going to have a great culling of all of these tools. So what I mean by that is 95% of what we've got today is probably not going to exist in the next few years. There'll be a big burst of the bubble and then the biggest players that will probably exist out of that or keep existing are of course going to be open AI, Microsoft, Google, Apple, all of those organizations that are already big and investing a lot. Speaking of Apple, they're probably a great example right now of boring and basic adoption at scale because a few weeks ago at their conference, they announced Apple Intelligence, which is basically their marketing word for AI. And as he said, these are some generative AI features we are going to include in our product. Why that's really interesting is because globally, as of today, 1.5 billion people use iPhones and there are more Apple devices on top of that as well. And that's interesting because many people criticize Apple for being late to this pie. But the funny thing I find is, if you're as big as Apple, surely that party doesn't start until you arrive. And that's what I think we're seeing now. Because not as many people are using generative AI tools as you think. And again, this report from Insana and Anthropic actually shows that. But as I say, if you've got 1.5 million devices globally, you can change that. And to be clear, Apple's Gen AI features aren't exactly groundbreaking, especially for the super nerds. You know, we're talking about stuff like writing assistance, smart reply with AI for emails, summarizing long text, creating images and emojis. It's not huge. It's not going to rock most people's world. But if you've been on the fence about these tools and you're an Apple customer, you're about to get all of this on your device. So a lot of people are probably gonna to start to convert to these tools. The knock-on effect of that is more adoption in the Apple ecosystem will mean that more people are going to look for these experiences at work too. So for the humble L&D Pro, this is then gonna focus on how do we help people to get great AI literacy and also to understand how to use these tools intelligently, despite all the amazing things that AI can do. The only thing that matters is how does your audience get benefit from it based on their context and the value they need. So for most people, dealing with emails, it seems, and summarizing long texts is a huge enhancer. The tech can do more, but do you need it to do that? And that's really the question I want to leave you with. So I hope that's been helpful and I will speak to you in the next one.